Gentlemen, welcome back to the Empire Dirt. Today, a treat especial. We're gonna make some cool shit, put her up on tinder nets. Well, the apprentice went out there with a dull beaver. Uh, excuse me. You'll forgive the state of my singing voice. I'm just getting over tuberculates yet again for the third time this winter. Fucking kids, man, little germ factories. Speaking of two words that don't belong in the same sentence together. Uh, we're gonna clean this up. I got a better tool now. I haven't done the bolter on it, but uh, it's, it's a shear for sheet metal. You see how much wastage I'm getting there. It's just sh shake your head. Contrary to the prime directive, we're gonna run this before we take her apart. We got the old bean flicker style. I'm steal my job. And yeah. It'll be a little bit tough to do this single-handed in the dark. I'll manage. Off camera, in consideration to those of us with weak stomachs or just getting over near death, I cut this basal platen out of some dead tree carcass. We're going to emboss this sign so that we're going to use a, a different kind of technique. Normally, what you would do to emboss, you know, one of those beautiful old signs. I'm not talking about those chintzy Chinese ones what are laser digitally printed on. You can see the pixels and they got, you know, funny messages on them and, and corpo slogans from 50 years ago. Not those soulless pieces of shit. What we're making is a beautiful gift out of copper, what will have a beautiful vel de gris patina after a while. You'll be able to have the raised lettering. We're going to emboss this. Now, normally when you emboss something, you would make a, a die out of tool steel and that'd be a single sign. You make the die, you put it in a press, ka-chunk, ka-chunk. That's fantastic if you want to make 20,000 of the fuckers. We only make one of, one of these. So here's the technique I, I believe is going to work just fanciful for us. We're going to use this as our basal platen. We will mirror image whatever we want and mill it out in the milling machine. And then we're going to use a technique, very seldom used, but it's an interesting technique. It's called single point forming. And what that does is instead of having a die that comes down and ka-chunk, ka-chunks the metal into, uh, you know, or progressively ka-chunk, ka-chunks the metal into shape, this thing is going to take a single point and push all over where it needs to be, slowly but surely forming this into the shape of the sign we want. Problem we run into, of course, because single point forming is not conducive to making a profit. That is, it takes a long time and the machine tool, you just never turn a profit on something like that. So industry doesn't use it particularly. That technique means there's no readily available tools. What for doing it? We got to, you ain't got the tools to do the job. You got to make the tools to do the job. So we are going to go ahead and make a single point form tool. We get the Chinesium dowel pin in here, likely softer than Mexican butter, but no big deal because recall the hierarchy of materials, cunt stain, tongue glide at the top, steel, tool steels, and so forth. Any material higher will cut the lower material. So we're going to machine copper. This steel will do just fine. We got her chucked up in the uh, Saskatchewan South Bend, Manitoba Monarch, depending on your disposition. I'm just going to give her a kiss there just to get the champ fear and then we'll do the rest in the machine. Now, if you're rolling what I'm smoking, 220 grit, one of these sanding sponges. We start off, well, this is as, as fine as we can get on the sanding sponge. Then she jumps up. We're going to polish that proper knob. I'm just going to bring it down until we hit into, there we go. We're in and now we'll just run her back and forth like this. We'll just run her to and fro a couple half dozen times on the X. Just some couple of ablative strokes and she's already got a proper hemispherical knob on her. If you focus, you follow. What do you tell a camera what's already got two black eyes? Son of a diddly. Now you have a look at that. Decided to go with a little bit large air pin. That's 0.115 across the flats. 
But nice, uh, yeah, look at this. It's like store boss. Pay no mind to the man behind the curtain. Fuck, I hate confusers, but they keep sucking me in. So here, we're just doing the confuser work to get this. Uh, these things run on ones and zeros. I don't speak ones and zeros, so. We're gonna close the doors, come in with a 1 8 end mill. I do not have any wood bits in this machine, so we'll run what you brung. And here we go. We're 5% rapids. 100% feed, just to make sure we're on. Looking pretty good. The Z height is correct. We're getting pretty close. Yeah. Here we're coming in with the 16th, just to clean up all those edges. Better screwed down somewhat solidly. The beauty about this is it's a low force operation because you're, you're putting a lot of movement into it. You don't have to put much force into it, if that makes much sense. You're just moving a tiny bit of material at a time. And we'll use some Wiener Schleiden 69. Dinner for two. They both get a face full of ugly. Okay, the tools are going to come down to the periphery. That's the sketchiest part on account of one this rotary axis being dangled out here. Now this is the older style. They got a newer style that doesn't have all this dingus in. However, I wanted this so I could peel this part off and just use this as a fourth axis tombstone type deal. And furthermore, we got to watch that we don't hit the fasteners. This one's for all the beans, no whammies. Oh, she come close to those. Ah! Oh. Okay, we're good on the rotary axis. The tool flung out of the holder, so I don't know what happened there. There's your trouble right there. Too aggressive on that first plunge. I had it plunge in 10 thou, doing the periphery. This stuff's 22 gauge, so that's 30 thou, thereabouts. That means that's a 40 thou. Uh, push down this far too much for this little pin once again for the second time I brought her down 25 thou brought her up rather 25 thou so it should only be taken but 15 thou for a for a cut cut in brackets well, I think we're good here we'll go to program reset hit the go juice poor duck Here's where it broke last time. Tough to see if it's doing anything. It running a brailed out of a tool, but it'll do a number of passes. We're gonna go to a depth of 80 thou. That's a fair, that's two millimeter of raised lettering. That's, that's a fair chunk of change. Whee! Ooh. Use some optimization on that, an hour and four minutes. And better tool as well, we're starting to pick up some man glitter. Change the program not as deep, and we're going with some thicker oil. Quite a bit more aggressive, gonna take nine minutes to machine, so yeah, it might get ugly. Through the magic of editing, the day is the morrow. Still fucking sick, thanks for asking. We've denigrated ourselves at the altar of Ikea to get some recycled toilet paper. You see, this was fine for the one-time use, but on the second go-round, not quite as crisp, clear, and delicious. See that bee? The bee popped the middle right out of her. So we're gonna have something with a little less, what would you call that, differential strength. Uh, you know, depending on which axis you're pulling on. Grain structure orientation biased. Fuck, I just got over the last human rights tribunal. Fuck. I'm laboring under the delusion that recycled toilet paper is reasonably lubricitous. Close your lungs, little bearings. Duh. Yeah, she's a little tight. Not to worry, she'll make her own hole. All you old bulls. 
tittering from behind your teacup or decades experience worth of reassembling hoonskit closet organizers. This powdered wood ain't good for fuck all. So we're going to go back to the, uh, the plywood, good ones. Uh, if I could get marine grade plywood here in the outer provinces, I would. But uh, she's a little bit hard to come by. The old empire she provides. I no idea why for I got it, but I had it, and there it is. Huh. It would appear as though our basal platen got a bit of a curve to the left. Well, that's no fucking good. Stiffen her up. Wood. What the fuck, eh? Nobody would use it if it didn't grow on trees. Holy old fuck, boys. I think we're getting her. How do you eat a mammoth? One bite at a time. Well, all right. There you have it, gentlemen. Single point incremental forming. Proof of concept. It works. I'd love to see somebody do this on a, on a 3D router with low force. This is allegedly a low force operation. You just got to take the secret lad is to take tiny bites. Beauty. You see that? Uh, that'd get all very degreed up. Oh, that'd be just look at that. Huh? Very easily done, right? Just a backing plate out of carbohydrate foam, cheap. Just make sure it's not bowed. And then a, a simple rounded over tool. I stepped the ripples down to 1,000 ripples. You're not relying on that movement. And then uh, uh, lots of grease on there and just take tiny bites. And I mean, the proof in the puddings in the eating of the currants. There's a lot of stuff you can do here. Like you're prototyping. Ain't no good for production, right? But for prototyping, you want to do something like uh, hydroforming, you know, nice curves and so forth. This might just be the way to do it. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice. Iterating right along. For easy, somebody with black thumbnails would be doing it on an English wheel. <laughs>